Previously on The Code, life with the Brumbies. Pre-season kicked off in the most emphatic style, with coaches and managers setting high standards of their own. Your first one was The last one was awesome, mate. Well done. And the commercial team kicked into gear. But we also need everybody to step up, you know, exercise initiative, go out and get there, kick, kick some asses, and, and, and you know, let, let's really get stuff happening. Yeah, 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 come back, come back, come back. Week one of pre-season is coming to a close, yeah. and a variation in training helps Ready, to break up go. the routine for the current Brumbies roster. <sighs> yep, bro, bang, bro, bang. Yeah, look at this, good. Okay, uppercuts again, throw the ball up, throw the punch. Today, the location is the AIS, the discipline is boxing, taught by national boxing coach Don Abnett. <laughs> Work all the way up to 10 and then all the way back down to 1. For some, the change in scenery is welcome. Look, I'm quite impressed at the uh, different variety of training, obviously with the boxing and swimming. and I love changing things up and uh, just to get out of here and do different things. It's good to take you out of the environment, take you out of what you're comfortable with, and uh, it definitely helps the boys to get fitter in different ways, and that, that's what it's about, just getting fit. So you're gonna throw uppercut, cork. For Albert Hane, it's a chance to give his vocal cords a workout, as well as his fists. I want you to try and reduce the strokes down. The truth is, what I want is you to accelerate through your stroke, push, glide, push, glide a little bit further, and I want you to reduce by at least four strokes. And it's really about trying to relax in the water and stay aerobic rather than just thrashing around and going anaerobic. Ready, go. Uh, with the swimming sessions, I think it's a great idea. It gives us a, another way of getting conditioning without having to be on our feet all the time, which helps us freshen up and stay, stay committed to it and you know, keeps our mind fresh. I suppose it's just a different thing to be running around on the field every day. Thanks, boys. Nice work. Done. The Brumbies roster has traditionally been a heady mix of seasoned veterans and promising up-and-comers from around the country. But local talent has always found a way onto the team roster in recent years. And one such recruit is local boy Joe Powell. I'm Joe Powell, I'm 21 years old and I'm from Canberra. Uh, well, I first started playing footy at uh, Maris College when I was uh, in year four, when I was 10. Until year 12, where I went to Tuggeron Vikings here and I've been playing there for three years. And then beginning of uh, the end of last year, I got a a go with the Brummies for pre-season and from there I got three games with them this year and then I signed an EPS contract for 2016. Uh, well pre-season goals are just the usual, just to improve my fitness, you know, get a bit more rugby knowledge about and just improve my strength and that and my passing and the kick is always a big goal as a halfback. Uh, my big goal for the season would be to be in the match day squad, but I'd, I'd love to be able to do that, but eventually I'd like to be the starting halfback if that'd be possible, I suppose that's my main goal here, here at the Brumbies. Well, I've always grown up watching the Brumbies, so it's my favourite team. Uh, my teammates, well, yeah, they're all, they're all really easy to get along with. And I guess all the players and that, they're just, uh, it's a really good bunch of boys. And being able to talk to all of them and not being kind of intimidated by any of them helps a lot. There's no one in the team who I wouldn't be able to talk to about anything, so I just suppose that's a massive help. So it just makes it a lot easier for new guys coming in. As Canberra closes in on the festive season and families gather for the Christmas break, it's also time for the founding members of the Brumbies family to congregate at HQ to meet the team's new players for the upcoming season. Tonight's my opportunity to, to uh, touch base with some of the new players and to see where they go and how they develop. And I was just saying to one of the uh, other foundation members here tonight that um, I remember when Pat McCabe was a newbie, a, a brand new boy coming to this, this very function. And, uh, and look where he went. So it's, it's, a great, it's a great opportunity to meet the new players and, and see what their aspirations are.
Joe Powell is not the only fresh face at the gathering tonight. Among the others is veteran Albert Hanay, a former Queensland Red who has many super rugby notches on his belt. Grew up in Brisbane. I was born in Wellington but grew up in Brisbane. At the age of six I moved there, so oh, it's good. Similar weather though, like yeah. I can eat that, that bowl of um What's that there? Mayonnaise? Yeah. yeah. It's like yogurt. Oh, <laughs> you know, you go hard, man. Good yeah. to meet you. Yeah, likewise, man. We've done a pretty good job, I think, this year in recruiting, you know, a new crop who are going to do the Brumby tradition pretty proud. Um, you know, I've made some pretty big predictions. You know, over the next five years, I want us to win the title twice. You know, and I want us to be in the finals, you know, four out of the five years. I've made a big call with... Um, the guy who owns Bill Corp, a sponsor of the NRC, I bet him a case of champagne that, uh, that Joey Powell's going to be the next number nine for the Wallabies. So <laughs> the, the bar's set pretty high for you, Joey, so uh, don't let me down, right? I suppose just growing up, being a Canberra, it's just a massive kind of thing for me, just watching the Brumbies from when I was so young, I never really thought, you know, I'll be playing for him. so it's just a, really a massive thing, and I just love to get a few more caps maybe next year and, you know, prove them up to this level would be, would be great. Well, I suppose with Canberra, everyone says they hate it, but no one seems to leave. And I think, I don't think I'd ever leave unless I had to. I love Canberra and it's just where I've grown up. It's what I know, so I wouldn't like to leave. Growing up as a young kid, I never really thought, you know, I'd, I'd ever play for the Brummies. So just as massive, like a surreal experience, you know, running on for the Brummies for the first time with my friends and family watching. So it was a great experience and one I'll never forget. The week proves to be the final act of 2015. The squad breaks for Christmas, knowing the season is now eight weeks away. It's a new year, and a couple of familiar faces are about to rejoin the Brumby squad this morning. Thanks for picking me up, man. What did you have to on your break, bro? Uh, not much, mate. Just, man, it was good to get away. We've been travelling for so long. Mm. See the family and stuff. Yeah. Did you do much training? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Yeah, mate, kept in shape. <laughs> Is every day too much or what? <laughs> Do you think it's too late to start hydrating? Nah, mate, never too late. I got a hydration test straight away. Just... Are you looking forward to getting back into training, mate? Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I sort of just miss being around the boys and stuff, eh? So, good to just get around boys and hang out and chill and... Kind of excited to get back into it now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Would you, where'd you go on your break? Did you do anything or? Uh, I went back to the farm for a bit, mate. Turned my phone off, got away, it was good. Why'd you turn it off for? You don't get a reception out there, do you? Nah, not really, but didn't want to waste the battery. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. Oh, you're not going to ask me what I got up to? Oh, it's all good. Nah, mate, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> They are not the only new faces returning to the fold. The Brumbies Wallabies, fully recovered from their World Cup campaign, and Puma scrum half Thomas Kubeli report in to swell the roster to full capacity. There's a couple of challenges, I guess, uh, making sure everyone's on the same page, making sure the guys who've worked here pre-Christmas feel like they've been recognised and appreciated. And then I guess motivating the Wallabies who've come back because they've had such a long period of time away from rugby, it's about getting them up to speed straight away so that um, they're ready for games in four weeks' time. Yeah, everyone has their own way of dealing with it, getting away from the game and um, yeah, I think it's, it's unique to every player. But I uh, always find it, the, the biggest thing I do is I find it really exciting to see how the guys have gone when I'm not here. I find that the Christmas period, I don't really enjoy it that much. You know, I'm kind of waiting to get back to training or or, or worried about what's going to happen in the next two weeks. The guys have clearly put in a lot of hard work before Christmas, um, so to join them now, and yeah, it was a bit of a shock to the system, but getting into it, and I think the more we start to do a bit of uh, ball in hand, rugby related stuff, the, the more enjoyable it comes. Yeah, I've had uh, the last two months, November and December off, to um, sort of get over the hangover of the World Cup. Um, and, and just sort of take some time off to let my uh, injuries heal. It was really good to be a part of a, a team environment again and see all the boys, see all the, the new fresh faces.
CEO Michael Jones has called a team meeting to give out team apparel and to address the troops, once their generous courtesies enable them to actually enter the room. Just the general thing that I have to say to you guys, which is, um, last year I was incredibly proud to be part of the organisation that you guys represent and are the main names and faces for. The way that you conduct yourselves in public, you know, the way that the reputation of this organisation is continually enhanced by your behaviour and the way that you conduct yourselves, you know, as pillars in the community is really outstanding and, and admirable. And uh, like I said, it makes my job as a CEO very easy. Um, can we please continue that this year? You know, I want everybody to have fun, enjoy this. This is your life. You're only getting one shot at it, so make sure you have a good time. But let's make sure we don't have too many screw-ups in public. Um, that would be really nice if I don't have to spend half my life crisis managing. Um, so on the behaviour side, that's, that's the right act. That's as much as come. We have had no problems so far. I don't expect any, and I thank you for the way that you guys conduct yourselves you know, in exemplary manner all the time. So right, thanks, guys. My name's Trent Hopkinson. I'm the performance analyst for the Brumbies. So my role uh, is a quite a diverse one. So I do all the, the video and tactical analysis for the coaches, a load monitoring and, and athletic monitoring through uh, the Smarter Base and, and GPS systems. I guess from an analytical point of view, you, you need to have interest in coaching and, and always thinking of what would the coach want. We just need to get the IT guy to put in the admin. So you're always constantly um, trying to find things that would interest them. They're the artist and, and you're just providing the paint. How was it, Beth? Up here. When the boys come in, it's pretty chaotic. Uh, we sort of need to get the GPS units off them and get their vests um, so we can start uh, analysing data from the session. All good, all good. Thanks, mate. Brilliant. Obviously, we have a lot of data at the end of training. Um, you know, the, the UC interns, um, are there and they code the footage for the coaches. Um, so this allows coaches to go through different drills of you know, individual players and, and look at how they're performing. Bong, what's going on? Oh, look at that. Once or twice a week, we do some physio screening with the boys. Also a, a USG, which is a urine sample. There you go. Thank you to see what hydration the boys are like. So often after a weekend, um, if they haven't been drinking enough water, we can sort of often tell straight away and try and get on top of it uh, sooner rather than later. 1.012. Benny A. 1.014. The boys have body weight goals that they're trying to achieve. So um, just to have a good idea of where they're tracking, um, we, we do that stuff every uh, Monday and Thursday. Here we go, Big Al, Big Al over here, mate, over here. You know, sometimes uh, we're a bit low on resources here, so, uh, you know, you get dragged into a, a, a drill or two here and there, so uh, my speciality is uh, passing from left to right. They are accommodating until you, um, until you get it wrong. You, you don't really hear much from them. That was probably me, Al, sorry. Go on, go on. Uh, so I did a double degree in sports science uh, and sports management at the University of Canberra, and then from there was lucky enough to uh, get an honour scholarship um, with the Brumbies. So it was a real stepping stone for me um, and sort of gave me a real insight in, into coaching and, and performance analysis and it really um, made me believe that I could make it. One of my interns is Adam Bradley. Um, he's been with us for a year and a bit now. I'm currently completing uh, my internship with the Brumbies. So the role of an assistant performance analyst is to essentially capture the vision for the coaches. It's all there and if they want to see a scrum they can just click the scrum button and it'll, it'll pop up for them. Adam's really good at asking the right questions. I guess even testing my knowledge for some of these things and, and, and ideas of, of stuff going forward. So uh, I think he has a bright future. Uh, after this year he'll be able to walk, walk straight into a, a professional sporting side and, and take up a you know a big role. I think it takes a very dedicated person. There's a lot of data there and, and um, you can often get caught up within it, but just trying to, I guess, filter through what, what is important and what isn't for the coaches is, is very important. Um, if you can do those kind of things, you, you're going to get the most out of it. The 
Brumbies travel to Threadbow to participate in a three-day training camp. It is a fast-track method to allow the new and returning players to bond with each other. Obviously they wanted to get the team to be able to bond um, and connect on all sorts of levels. I guess personally to try and connect with your teammates and then um, to connect on the field as well. What, what floor are you, Scotty? So getting everyone in kind of sleeping in the same quarters, you know, having breakfast, lunch, dinner with each other, kind of just gets to know each other. Set a few, I guess, goals and plans for the year. And then um, once that's done, you can kind of just enjoy each other's company, which is a little bit harder to do, um, I guess, in camera when your family's around. A single and a double. Gee whiz. Oh, nice and close, Joey. <laughs> Three, oh, here we are. How do we figure this out? Do we go on age or? Mate, you've got a crook hammy. It's alright. How's yours? Well, mine's good. I gotta sleep in my bed with my wife and my daughter. Have it. So, have it. <laughs> I'm joking. Have it. I'm have joking. It. No, no, no. Wait, we can paper scissors rock if you want. No, I'm not room by myself. Uh, Tomas is actually a little bit late. Uh, downstairs here, to be fair, he doesn't speak English that well, so he's probably a little bit lost. Um, but we have a meeting, so I've kind of left a good man behind. But it looks like we're going to get to know each other quite well because we're pretty much sleeping on top of each other. Uh, Joey took the one closest to the door in case he wants to leave, yeah, yeah. leave in a hurry. Yeah. And um, this is me here, but we're practically touching each other, so that's good. As I said, I, I don't know Thomas, so it'll be good to get to know him. Um, and we won't really have a choice. Um, but no, it's good. It's, uh, it's got a couple beds, mate, and we're staying up in the uh, hills, so it's pretty good. Last year was pretty hard, so I guess this year, all know, knowing the coaching staff this year will probably be harder, so. The schedule says uh, in the mornings we've got rugby, some unit meetings and all that, and the afternoons were left free. But um, I don't think the boys are reading too much into that. I think um, there'll be some special activities planned for us. They've left lunchtime every day, kind of um, from about 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock free, so I'm sure they've got something out of the ordinary plan for us. The escape from Canberra will be welcome. The rest at the end of each night will be treasured. It's day one in Threadbow, and the day has barely broken as the Brumbies embark on the first gruelling training session for the trip. The camp has been designed to push the players to an unprecedented level of physical, mental and teamwork requirements, starting this morning. Uh, so the reason I guess we use Threadbow, we do uh, you know, a little bit of scouting around to see what would work best uh, for the Brumbies. And we've got a vested interest in this part of the world. You know, southern region comes under the Brumbies banner. Uh, so there's a big part of that uh, in coming down to Threadbow each year. Uh, we were down here last year and we thought it went really well. And we just want something that's it's not Canberra, you know. Like, it's a really small community. Um, you've got fantastic terrain which you can use as part of your training program and part of your training stimulus that we don't have access to. This is the first time we've trained together as a whole. So the Wallabies, we've got 12 Wallabies come back. Uh, so it's a great chance to just bring everyone in together. Um, and by coming away, we get to actually spend a lot of time to, with each other. It's, a, it's just a nice way to really bring it all together. And probably the biggest point of coming down here is uh, to really gel as a group, uh, you know, it gives us an opportunity to get away. Uh, after the Christmas period, we've had some uh, time with our families and that kind of stuff, and just get away, refocus, set goals, uh, both staff and players, um, for the 2016 campaign. And you know, last year we did a similar thing, uh, and this year we'll always look back on how hard things were up here, you know, and how we worked as a team to kind of get through that uh, a really tough training block as well. So the plan for this week is to, I guess, challenge them differently to what the, they'd normally be challenged. Uh, so instead of the normal running rugby load, we're going to throw in a whole bunch of different sorts of challenges. We're going to walk them up hills, we're going to walk them through rivers, we're going to test them mentally. Part of it is to also try and develop some leadership in some younger players. Uh, while we've got different groups with uh, some senior players leading each group, uh, those leaders 
have really been told to really watch what happens with the younger players and see how they step up too. Today, we spoke about it a bit last night, but today it's just about that competitive edge. So, so trying to find it at training this morning and then what we're doing this afternoon as well. Uh, we'll be looking for that as coaches, making sure that we're driving it, but you guys have got to drive it yourselves as well. So first session of the year, and it's an important one because we know we've only got a short period of time before the first game, the first trial game, and then the first season game. So no excuses for, for sloppy um, execution today. We've got to get the intensity up from the start today. In keeping a close eye on players new and returning, and also running various components of today's training, is Ford's coach, Dan McKellar. Extend him a little bit, Tommy, extend him. We'll just have one group of four carts, you just work in, we're just doing 10 each side, just rotating. Today's training is just to get the group together and, and you know, start to continue what we worked on in the uh, pre-Christmas block. Are you standing on the ground there, Docs? Those pads are screaming. Again, it's just about uh, that bonding, I suppose, and, and getting everyone together. We've got guys that have come from the Wallabies, guys from NRC, and then, and then a few guys that are, that are new to the group. Hugga bong, hugga bong, hugga bong! Yep. Good skill, bomb. We're missing a lock. Tyrell's one of the locks. And that's what, that, that can happen with the locks, especially when it's, when it's off kick return. Try line here, you're just trying to score as many tries as you can within 90 seconds. After 90 seconds, we'll swap roles. As Rhino said, you're just working as a chain, staying connected, trying to shut down the attack. Good stuff. Well done, boys. Yeah, the session today went really well. Um, again, it was just, um, you know, uh, I suppose that momentum that we got pre-Christmas uh, has continued after Christmas, and uh, it's a good start. Lunchtime provides the Brumbies with a chance to power up after the morning's training session. But for Matt Tamua, it's an opportunity to check out how his roommate recent Argentinian import Tomas Kubali is adapting to his new environment. Do you understand the uh, moves in English? Yeah, perfect. They're all right? I have to take some notes. You, you took notes, I, I saw you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm going to show you after. It's hard enough in English for yeah. us. I learn for you. Oh, I understand. In the, mm -hmm. You put it in the yeah, whiteboard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's you like quick. call it in the, um, in the, in the film, the training film, like mm. quick. You wait, 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 and then you think about it, eh? Yeah. You like the uno, dos, tres, so we keep with that, eh? Make it easier. That's all we know. Last year you came here for a preseason. Mm. But we stayed down there. Near the field? And then we came up here on the last day. Kubeli knows that language won't be the only barrier, as scrum half will be a hotly contested position in the roster this year. But for now, he's happy. Next time on The Code, Life with the Brumbies. The adventure challenge puts the players under pressure. So you have to only have one foot on the ground, you can't lie down, you can't sit down. Three, two, one. Mount Kosciuszko makes for a tough climb. Just let me know when you go. And a home-cooked meal proves to be the best form of recovery. <laughs>